What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Journey Podcast. If you're here, subscribe, like, drop a comment. Closing in on 10,000 subs, we're about 6,100 right now. So our goal before the end of the year was to hit 10K. Um, this episode is sponsored by Evermore Alkaline Water. Shout out to them. Uh, joined by Cousin Jake. How are we feeling? What up? Uh, yeah, with our new editor today, we're going to get to 100,000 subscribers in this next month. Yeah. yeah yeah no he's good yeah we yeah. found we found uh we found some guy what happened what happened with that someone dm'd you yeah some guy just emailed me and he was like uh he's like hey your youtube shorts suck uh yeah. let me make you a free one mm-hmm. and uh i can guarantee it'll you know outperform the ones that you're posting right now mm-hmm. and i was like okay because i i understand like you we understand that the the platforms all perform differently depending on the clip like the mm. our, our tiktok style is perfect it, it works with the songs and the music and the text and the start and finish but right. youtube it's a different audience mm. and probably not as much sad simpy people on youtube yeah as tiktok and people uh, just want entertainment on youtube yeah 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 they exactly it has to be fast paced yeah. and and that's what this guy kind of did and he's right. editing with like ai and and he's adding his twist to it and yeah. it, it, the clip he sent us today was fucking incredible yeah yeah so, so yeah so i'm excited just, that, yeah no that shit that shit's gonna be funny yeah you guys are gonna start seeing the shorts uh yeah it's just it's it just it's just funny um how am i feeling um i feel good bro i feel good I, you know this is a very funny episode for me because i think last episode i uh, stated the fact that I definitely have not really been on the self-help stuff. Yeah. Um, and I haven't, I've continued to not be on the self-help stuff. Uh, actually my new morning routine. So my old morning routine was, um, wake up, no checking of the phone, leave the phone inside, go outside, sunlight, read, journal, meditation, um, and then go start the day. Like very strict morning routine. Uh, my new morning, my new morning routine has been um, wake up. I've been waking up every morning at like uh, six a.m. for some reason. I, I don't know why. I don't know, but I've been waking up every morning at six a.m. and uh, I swipe hinge for a couple hours. That's the okay. first thing. It's the first thing I do in the morning, and uh, and then I go start my day. And uh, no meditation, no reading, um, no uh, yeah, no meditation, no reading, no journaling, and uh, I've been feeling fan fucking tastic like yeah, join the club I could, what, what do you say i said join the club what do you mean no reading no meditating no journaling yeah i feel good i feel really good uh i, I think sometimes like me and you had this conversation a little while back uh-huh. where i was like yo i think like you're like diving too deep into it yeah. where you're kind of like psyching yourself out and you're like you're fucking yeah, you're just like over indulging in like the spirituality and self help, and you were almost driving yourself insane for a while. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes like it's good to just maybe step away from it and mm-hmm. like you know live and just kind of not have to think all the time. Right. You know, like it does feel good sometimes to just like wake up and, well, and cruise no, about your day. I'm certainly thinking more now. Really, I'm, bro, way more. But like that's the fun of it is like because. I was so, I was meditating so much. I wouldn't be thinking that much, but like if a negative thought came up, it would be like blaring because there wasn't that much going on inside my mind. So whenever a negative thought would, I realized like for me, like a negative thought would come up and I would like, it would be very hard for me to let it go. Now I'm like, on, I'm jumping from hinge to my email to logging into Instagram a little bit to going in the car to play. Like, I'm just like, I'm so on to the next thing right now that um, that I'm thinking a lot, but like it's it's not it's not so bad because uh, I don't feel like I'm um it, I guess I, I agree with you in that meditative state um I'll like let's say like shame comes up I'll spend all day with shame just trying to figure it out where is it coming from this that and uh, and I and I agree you know it's not it's not healthy yeah yeah it's not healthy yeah I saw this cool study um I was watching George Janko's podcast he brought Mm -hmm. up a study Mm -hmm. uh, about the brain and he said uh so the part of the brain that makes you feel anxious Mm -hmm. is the same part that can practice gratitude Mm-hmm. So you can never feel anxious and grateful at the same time. Mm-hmm. So like that was like a cool thing where it's like, I think sometimes like you can start your day like 
feeling anxious like all day you know what i'm saying like you feel like you need to do something or you feel like you know like everything is going wrong and stuff like that like you're dealing with your anxiety right and like when you do that you can never feel grateful Mm -hmm. like and i think like that's been like a part at least for me and i'm sure you deal with it like with the anxiety sometimes like Mm -hmm. when you are like going through your shit where it's like when you are feeling that anxious side take over you can't be grateful for like anything that's going on in your life Mm -hmm. So that's just, that was just like a cool study. And, and, and he correlated it back to like the Bible where, um, he said, he said in the Bible, they, they stated that, but that was before the science was even discovered yet about the brain. Mm -hmm. And it was like pretty cool. Like just, uh, thing that he brought up that I thought about in the morning, I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, whenever I am like, kind of like when I wake up and I wake up feeling like anxious and stuff like that. I'm not grateful for like anything I have in my life. I'm just thinking about all the things that are like going wrong. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's big. That's a big part. There's uh, there is, you know, what's funny is, um, although I haven't been doing the self help via meditation, um, I certainly have been doing the self help inside of my mind. It's just not like my whole day is kind of a meditation now, you know? So like, whereas, you know, when you sit down to meditate, um, that's your time to, um, I guess just be aware of what your mind is thinking and, and let your mind play out its dramas. Um, but now, I mean, I'm, I'm just taking everything that I've learned in the meditation and I'm bringing it into my regular life. Um, and, uh, I know it sounds, it sounds crazy. Um, and I, you know what, bro, I think, I think the point of like this entire, like, I didn't really even want to like spend too much time on this. I think the point of what I'm trying to get at is, you know, there's been times in my life where I'm fucking meditating and I'm dieting and I'm not on the dating apps and I'm not jerking off and I'm fucking in the gym and I'm waking up early and I feel like shit. And there's times in my life where I am uh, on the dating apps and going out and partying and calling my ex-girlfriend and doing all the wrong things and I feel amazing. So the point that I'm trying to get at is like I'm not I, – I, I think in life uh, – I don't really know how much of a, of a formula there is for life. I just think that things happen to you and you take things for what they are and you just try to do your best. I think the common denominator throughout all of it is always being a good person, always being like a selfless person. I think that that's something you should always do, whether you're doing self-help or you're not. Um, but uh, yeah, I just don't know. Uh, I, I'm just kind of stunned because I'm. I treat my body like a like a, almost like a science test, you know, because I'm trying to be happy, healthy, and strong, and mm. I and and feel love, and you know, just be a good guy. And especially now that you know we're, we we have followers and and we're getting some pop and people look up to us, I want to be able to give people the answers. But the more I try to figure that out them out, the more I'm like, I don't know if we do figure out the answers. I think the answer really is just enjoying your life, having fun, not taking things so serious and whatever happens, happens. So uh no no if 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 you're in a season, just know that it's gonna change because this too shall pass. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really all it comes down to. And like Yeah, for me for me it's it's just uh it's just it's a lot of that a lot of just like ups and downs and that and you know how i'm feeling mm-hmm. it's uh i don't know where I, i'm I'm just like personally and yeah how are you feeling yeah question for you like how are you doing yeah i don't know i just feel like i'm just at like a weird chapter in my life mm-hmm. and uh there's uh there really hasn't been there hasn't been outside of this much going on that i'm that like passionate about that that happy about and it's weird it's like when you uh when your life is like pretty say say boring almost and mm-hmm. and it's pretty mundane and there and there isn't really that much to look forward to mm-hmm. um when you when when something in your life finally like brings you some type of happiness and like some type of joy mm-hmm. uh like you try your best to just fucking like hold on to it and mm-hmm. like squeeze it for dear life like the smallest thing that like can like make you feel something or make you be happy and it it's it sucks when like sometimes you feel like it's slipping away because now you're just like you're holding on for dear life just to like keep that thing close because you're like yo like this is the only thing that's bringing me happiness right now mm-hmm. and that's kind of how i feel right now where 
there's maybe one or two things that like actually bring me like happiness or like bring me joy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm doing whatever I can to keep those around and, and keep like nurturing that whatever, whatever it is that's bringing me happiness. And, uh, there's just a, a part of me that is like scared to almost lose it, mm -hmm. you know? And that's just kind of where I'm at right now because just because it's you know i've kind of i've accepted where where i'm at and where we're at but mm -hmm. i'm just uh i don't know i'm just kind of like going through the motions really like day, yeah. to, day day by day you know yeah i've been feeling li like everyone is going through like a very limbo period i've been feeling i've you know like been speaking to a lot a lot of um a lot of my friends a lot of our friends uh paying attention to what's happening online i feel like a lot of people are, are in that limbo period you know this is kind of the state and i think for us um, we expected things to happen a lot quicker than they did. Uh, all that being said, you know, we did, we did do a hundred million views, uh, well, probably 91 million, uh, on just on TikTok alone. Cause 9.1 million likes, uh, you average that out a hundred thousand for every uh, million views for every a hundred thousand likes. So 91 million, 91 million views legit, uh, on paper. Yeah. But then, then, then factor in your Instagram, um, your personal Instagram and yeah. then factor in, yeah, I mean, I mean, you can. It's not us, but like all the other pages that have posted us. Yeah, so over a hundred million. <laughs> yeah, you know, like our faces and and voices have got over a hundred million views. In there just been hasn't. You know what? You know what it is for us, bro. With this podcast, there hasn't been much to build. Like there hasn't been much to do because like it's just we're just doing we're just doing uh we're just doing the podcast. You know, and and uh, I think I think maybe you know speaking about it now we we've just we've been get we have gotten a little um, discouraged, you know, maybe we could have sent more emails to sponsors and, you know, try to get more guests on, but, uh, but Hey bro, like that's kind of the point, the point of this, me bringing up the hinge and the morning routine thing of this podcast is that like, you know, bro, you do your best. And if you feel like shit, you feel like shit, but just try not to st try not to judge yourself for feeling like shit because you'll often find after, after that storm, uh, you know, there's this big, beautiful sunshine. And, and sometimes right after the worst weeks of my life come the best weeks of my life. Yeah. You know, every single time something bad has ever happened to me. I'm talking like the really horrible, terrible, bad stuff. Um, it passes. And I'm like, man, why did I beat myself up over that over that thing? You know, um, I, I feel, you know, so. So, yeah. So uh, I think that, you know, for the for the people listening. Listen, you know, if, if you're listening, you know, odds are you're, you're somewhere in our age range, a little younger, a little bit older. I mean, we, we have talked that we like kind of started a genre. So who, who knows who knows where you're at? But I'm sure you can relate to feeling stuck and feeling in a limbo period, feeling complacent. Um, if you're if you if you can honestly say that you are trying to push the needle forward, you know, if like you, you can genuinely say you're just trying to do your best like we are, um, if things aren't happening for you. I think that's for, by I think that's by design from God, um, because you know I just know like I just know what it's like to be having a terrible week, a terrible month, and then out of nowhere you get that eureka! Oh my God! Like this is what I need to do with my life. Yeah, you know, um, I'll never forget, bro, when I, uh, you know, like, and I think I think I think too, like people shouldn't be so worried about making mistakes. You know, I remember uh, three years ago when we shot that podcast the day after I was so drunk and I was on like this techno cruise and I called my ex-girlfriend and I drove drunk 100 million miles per hour home. I'm not proud of that, you know, and like I just had this terrible night. Um, now it's like I look back on that and uh, and it just wasn't like, yeah, like I just think I just think, you know, the, the the worst thing i personally feel like you could do um in your life like people ask me all the fucking time they're like yo should i make this decision or should i make this decision and i've spoke about this on the pod before like you know there's so like there's so much charge behind it's either this or it's this and i'm like no it's not you yeah. know you pick this you deal with that if you pick this you deal with that i don't believe in damage control yeah i i bro i really don't i really believe like dude you what like you just do something. The worst thing you could do is do nothing or spend time trying to be in between this thing because you, you get caught in that in that overthink, overthinking state. And I think, bro, like a body in motion stays in motion. I think that's why like me being on Hinge and being back on social media and me like being in the gym and not necessarily like spending so much time sitting down and doing this all day 
is like really healthy for me because I feel like a body in motion stays in motion. Like you just, bro, if your life is in shambles and you really don't know like what to do uh, and you're caught between decisions, it's like, bro, just do something and then do another thing and then do another mm-hmm. thing. And like you find in that process, like you start building momentum and then all of a sudden you get the clarity to be like, okay, I'm going to do this. And, uh, and then your life improves. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think especially like in this chapter, like a majority, majority of our, of our listeners and, people that fuck with us are in the same realm of like they know life there's more to life than what they have right now Mm -hmm. but they're still trying to figure it out you know that's everyone's thing like we're all trying to figure it out and like you'll always still continue to be trying to figure it out you know no matter what like pedestal you're on Mm -hmm. but I think one thing that like it's hard it's hard for a lot of people especially right now and and I'm and and I know it's been hard for us is like um, like dealing with the people around you and your friends. Mm-hmm. Um, like Hermosi talked about this and he said like this chapter of your life is the, the lonely period. Mm-hmm. And he basically said, you're right now you're at a chapter in your life where you've kind of outgrown your old friends and they don't really understand what you're doing or what you're talking about. And you haven't done enough or made enough success to be around the people that you aspire to be like. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of sitting somewhere in this middle where it's like, I know I want more for my life. I know like I'm taking the right steps to get there, but I'm not there yet, but I am above like my friends that I grew up with because they're all kind of just in cruise control and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So it can be hard when you are in this chapter because like you do feel alone a lot. Like there, there's not many there's not many people to relate to. There's not many conversations to be had that you can gain anything from. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the first month, the first three months, the first six months, maybe even the first year, it's cool because you feel like you're set out on this grind. And then like after a while, if you haven't surrounded yourself with like enough like-minded individuals, it can get like a little lonely, a little tedious, like Mm -hmm. a little boring. And it and i think that's the chapter that we're in right now like i was thinking about it yesterday i believe yeah yeah i was thinking about it just yesterday and i was just like you know i'm not really friends with like anyone anymore mm-hmm. you know i really don't have that many people that i can like genuinely say like it, it's it's got to a point now where it's more like We just know each other. We knew each other. Um, I saw this other clip, this guy, this guy, he had like a, he had like a funny, a funny, uh, like, I don't know, analogy or metaphor, whatever about like friendship and stuff like that and friends. And he was like, you know how you call like your day one friends. Mm -hmm. So like your day one friends are usually friends that like you grew up with. And most of the conversations that you have are memories. They're all things that you guys used to do in the past, but you've kind of outgrown them. But since you've known them for so long, you just, that's all that you really talk about. Mm -hmm. But he was like, what he likes is like the day two friends, Mm -hmm. because usually those friends you chose, you attracted them into your life or, or, you know, you guys met for a reason, a reason, and you guys can build like you guys are providing value Mm -hmm. while more so like the day one friends you either like went to the same school like you guys kind of just happened to be friends you know Mm -hmm. like you were almost forced to be friends and like so he was just saying like those those new friends like those are the people that like you're going to continue to build with and like level up with and those are the people that are going to improve like the quality of your life yeah and i feel like we need more of that, mm-hmm. you know, and it's hard that we're still in the hometown mm-hmm. to, to get that. But I think that'll be another thing where, you know, like if you want to be a doctor, like doctors hang around doctors, lawyers hang around lawyers, professional mm-hmm. athletes hang around professional athletes, you know, like we're guys that are content creators, podcasters, motiv- trying to be motivational speakers, trying to impact thousands of people's lives. And it's like, we don't surround ourselves around any people that have really done that to the level that we want to do it. Mm-hmm. And I just think that would help us, um, just help us in our journey, just like surrounding ourselves with more like-minded individuals mm-hmm. because our day to days are, are typically like pretty mundane, pretty boring. And, uh, there just hasn't been, there hasn't been there, there's a lot to look forward to, like 
down the road. Yeah. Um, but there hasn't been much to look forward to like every day. Like uh, D- Joe Dispenza talked about that shit mm-hmm. where he was like, nobody is excited to wake up in the morning because like every single day is usually the same. There's no excitement. There's no spontaneity. Mm-hmm. And he was like, go back to when you were a kid, when you were going on a school field trip, you were up before your parents, you were dressed ready to go before your parents even woke up because you knew it was going to be a new experience. You knew there was going to be something cool something fun that happened that that maybe you haven't done before yeah and you got to bring that back as an adult you got to bring that spontaneity back that 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 curiosity back every day you wake up and like there there should be excitement in every single day and right now it, it it's kind of hard to to find that and that's what i talked about earlier where it was like right now like you know what i'm talking about i'm not going to say it but like i found some type of happiness and like I'm trying to like hold on to it because like that's the only thing that's like making me feel something right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just it's just been uh, yeah, it's been a little weird. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? You know what's so cool? So I wasn't even gonna. I just had this thought. I was gonna say something else, but like that just made me think about something. If that thing left you right now, if that if you lost that thing, it'd probably be the best thing that can happen to you, because it's like. You know, I, I just truthfully believe that, bro, the worse it gets, um, bro, when you, because the more pain you can go through, bro, and right now you're, you've just stated that this is all you have to look forward to. So if that's stripped from you, you're going to be in a dark place, bro. Yeah. But yo, but yo, the, the good news is that when you can take that pain and bring it into something else that's when like excellence happens you know that's when like something changes and that's really kind of what we need right now because there are things we could be doing to change our circumstance and there is a level of complacency that we've had you know so i i've just seen um bro the pain that I had when that that Victoria uh, broke my heart three weeks ago, because we're in the same position. Yeah, I don't have shit to look forward to either. Yeah. You know, so when I lost her, and it was the most beautiful thing I had in my life by one thousand million. And you know me, bro. I'm dramatic. The same way I'm dramatic here. I'm dramatic in my relationship. You know, and uh, I had such strong feelings for her. And when she left. Bro, I couldn't even believe the pain. You know, it was like I was, bro, it was like I was like it was like I was married to her for 25 years, you know. I guess I guess I was just milking it for all it was worth, you know, and um and because we didn't have that much going on in our life outside of I didn't because I didn't have that much going on in my life outside of this one relationship when it was gone it made me feel like uh, I, I had uh I, I i had no ground to stand on but bro i figured it out and because i figured it out i honestly feel pretty limitless right now i feel pretty much unstoppable i'm not saying that i'm not bored i'm very bored still you know we really still don't have that much going on um but um I took that pain, bro, and I and I and I like I gave it to me, you know? And I, I turned it into respect for myself of like, whoa, like every single person that doesn't believe in me. And I remembered all of the bullshit that I've had to deal with. And I remembered the past four years where two out of the four I was negative in my bank account. And I remembered that every single night I sleep on the floor with a severe spinal cord injury from college football I took all that pain and now it's this self-respect for myself where I feel very I don't know if you've noticed but I've been feeling extremely confident extremely you know and so I just and it's making my and it's making my life better and on paper bro like I think that's kind of why the Instagram is hitting too you know I, I feel like that's why more opportunities are coming in is because one I've been trying 
one, I can genuinely say that I've been trying my ass off for the past four months. I wasn't before that, but ever since bro, I started I started the carnivore diet, I've been working my ass off. And then two, things got so bad for me, and I had no choice but to take that pain and turn it into something positive. And um, that... Th- so I, I don't know how to end that clip, but whatever. But I would just say, I would just say, like, bro, for you, like, you know, even if, sh- even if this thing left, it would be like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. But it would just, you know, bro. The truth is, bro. Guys like us, I'm in my bag. Fuck the clips. The truth is, guys like us, bro. We figure it out, you know. Nah, yeah. We like, figure it out, bro. Yeah, I'll always we figure really it do. out. It's just, uh, nah. It's it's a bad place to be, like. When you're when you're sitting around like waiting for for something and and how you feel is completely dictated by another individual, most more often than not, it has nothing to do with them mm-hmm. or you know or the or the person. Yeah. It, it it completely has to do with you mm-hmm. and like how much and and like how you view yourself. And when it's like you're dependent or relying on like a certain situation to make you feel a certain type of way. I mean, like that's that's a that's not a that's not a healthy place to be. Like, not a mentally healthy place to be. And I've felt myself there a little bit uh, recently, where it's like my my mood is strictly determined off of off of that, you mm-hmm. know, off of off of say someone else. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's weird, bro. It's uh it's a weird thing. And it's like, and like, you've been through it. And I mean, anyone listening like has been through it where it's mm-hmm. like it's times, you know, like, you know, when like something's off, mm-hmm. like, you know, when like, like that, that feeling that you get, like when, when something's a little bit off, it could be the smallest thing. Yeah. And what that is, that's like your connection with God trying to tell you something and it's up to you whether you want to listen to that feeling or not Mm -hmm. and when you don't listen to that feeling you usually get fucking hurt very badly yeah and it's like a piece of advice for like anyone that does have that feeling like it's like act on it quickly and control it and do your best to like step away from that right and 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 take back control because like i've spoke we spoke about on the last side but it's just like when you put your when you put your your happiness and your and your self-control like in 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 another situation like it's not it's not a happy place to be Mm -hmm. and i mean yeah like like you said like that that pain right like it's it's a good thing but like I mean, bro, like, I, I thought about that shit the other day, too. Like, I really thought about that shit. I'm like, hey, like, bro, like, I know I know I've know felt a lot of shit in my life. I know I've been through a lot of shit. And, and maybe I am a little over, over emotional or soft or, right, like, you could call it that or, but I don't, like, bro, I'm at the point now in my life, bro, like, I'm just tired of feeling that shit. I don't want to feel that pain anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to have to go through this shit and, and, and then use this hurt as motivation. Bro, I just want to be happy. That's like all I want to do now. Like I just want to be happy and, and give my all to like everything and just be the best version of me that I can be at all times. Like that's really where I'm at. And, 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 I've, and I've taken the shit that I've fucked up in the past that I could have been better I could have been better in current in, in, in certain situations. I could have I could have been a better person. I could have made people feel a certain type of way. And and I decided not to. And that led me to feeling this type of pain. So then I learned from it. So now I'm at the stage in my life where I feel like I want to make I want to make the change the the proper changes to to never feel that way again. Like so it's like yes, I I understand that like with with pain and 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 bad and bad things like comes great success and 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 you know power but i'm also at the chapter in my life where it's like bro like i'm just tired of that shit i'm tired of feeling that shit i felt that shit my whole life every time like i held on to something 
or I was passionate or I loved something, it was taken from me. Mm-hmm. And, then I, and then I hit rock bottom and then I had to go deep and find myself. And then I got close or I did something that I was that I fell in love with and then I got stripped from me again. And it's like, bro, I'm just out of chapter. Like, bro, I'm sick of that shit. I'm tired of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do, you, do, you, do you realize the mistake you're making? Because it's blaring. It's like screaming at me in the face, bro. Let me hear it. Uh, bro, you're looking for happiness in everything outside of you. Yeah, and yes and no. Yes and no. Because... I am happy. I am happy with who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. I am happy with the things I've accomplished. I am happy with the trajectory of my life. I am happy where I know I'm going. Mm -hmm. And, but to me, like, just like the most important things in my life, bro, is like, is just, is, is relationships Mm -hmm. and like friendships and connections with people. Mm -hmm. I've spoke about it before, like memories, you know, they're never by yourself. The best memories in your life, they're never by yourself. They're always with someone, whether it's a friend, a family member, a partner, you know, stuff like that. Like, I just, I don't like to like, I'm just not a person that, well, I'll, I'll reiterate. My sto- like the way I, I, I get what you're saying, but like the bro, the reason I feel like that is like, bro, like I did go through something at 12 years old and it made me. I'm trying to word this correctly, like... Take a second. Yeah, like... Find it. Bro, it made me... It made me honest... Like, I'm not even trying to get... Like, fuck the clips. I'm just trying to, like... Mm. Really, like... I fuck the clips, bro. Yeah, no, I'm fuck trying to... Clips. I'm trying to, like, tell you, like, how like, I actually feel, like... So, like, bro... Like, my mom dying, like, gave me, I guess, attachment issues. Mm-hmm. Where I felt... I felt dependent on other people because like I would lack such a huge part of my life and a huge part of my childhood. So like when I get close to someone or when I get close to something and I lose it, bro, that shit crushes me. Mm-hmm. So like when I, when, when I give my all to someone or I, or I put my all into something and then it gets taken from me, I don't take it well because I went through, I went through that as a fucking 12 year old. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I really, I really lost someone that was like so close to me. I lost someone that like meant the world to me. So when I do that now, yes, you could say I'm putting my happiness, say in other situations or other people, but it's because like, I never really had that. So I'm always like searching for that or I'm always looking for that because I never really had it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a difference between like, you know, say like your relationship with your father, right? Or, and, and then obviously your relationship with your mother, like it's different. So, and I feel like, I feel like a piece of me, like I missed that as a child when I was growing up mm-hmm. and, and, and it's certainly affected me now. Cause like every time I put myself in this situation, I'm like, I'm like, why the fuck did you do this again? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, you, you haven't learned like how many times are you not going to learn from past mistakes? And, and then there I go again and I'm putting myself in that position. Mm-hmm. And like you said earlier, bro, at the end of the day, like guys like us, we're, we're always going to figure it out. I'm always going to be all right. But in the time being, like, I just hate, I hate the way that that shit feels, you know? So like, what do you, I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Like, like what makes you, like you said, it's blaring, right? And it's like, you're like, obviously you said I'm putting my happiness in other people, but like, what do you think? I I, I don't know. Like, what do you think from that? From like what I shared in, in, in that aspect? I think that's great. Uh, I still don't change. I still don't think it changes the fact that you're still putting your happiness in other people. You know, I think it gives you a very nice reason on paper, you know, and like, I'm sure if there was a therapist, they'd be right here and they'd be like, no, Jake, Zach is valid. He has, you know, the blah, 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 trauma issues and this thing. And bro, like by all means, like that's great and all, but I'm just saying like from what I've learned and the reason why I liked that all that meditation woo woo stuff is because I, I just learned, bro, that like, you can't control outside circumstances yeah. ever, you know, and like you literally can't, bro. So I'm not, bro, and I haven't figured out, I haven't figured out that side of things, bro. I haven't figured out the meditation side of things. But the same way that I feel like I was over the top with it, I feel like you weren't enough with it, you know. So I feel like you haven't even given it a real chance to actually make an impact in your life, um, because, bro, it's it's not. That, that, that self-help stuff for me, like from what I've noticed about it is that like, and I literally said at the beginning of this podcast, bro, it's not like you do it and you feel better. You don't feel better, you know, but bro, there's, there has to be some reason why 
so many people are so invested, bro. Think about it. People commit their lives and they give up sex and they give up um, uh, their their lifestyle and their parents, bro. Monks have to give up their family. They're like, oh, we're not family anymore. I'm not saying I would do that, but like there's something to this thing that I, that I, at least that I've witnessed inside of, inside of myself that it does help. Now, um, I'm not saying we need to be monks. I don't, we didn't sign up for that. Our karma is like, bro, we're just cool dudes from Long Island. Like, that's our life, you know? Yeah, Maybe yeah. if we grew up in India or something, we can go be monks. But I'm just saying, like, I just know that that lifestyle from what I've seen inside of myself, and it, it wasn't that, it wasn't that it made, it wasn't that meditation and journaling and all that shit made my life better. It didn't make my life better, but it saved my life in a sense, right? Like, it, it, it's something now, it gave me tools that, let's say if I was in your circumstance, which I just was in, and then it got taken from me. And listen, bro, I, I had a bad week, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had a, I had a bad week, I had, I, had, I had two bad weeks with it, but I'm just able to see now that I have all of these um, tools, I guess I would say, you know, like tools, like things, like... Um, like, uh, I guess bro, the entire point of like what I'm getting at is like, bro, I just feel like for you, um, you almost can't like, I'm telling you that you're placing your happiness inside someone else. So it like doesn't really make sense to you because you're not experientially understanding it because I've experientially under understood it because I've like, I've like sat in a meditation and I had a second to be like, oh, this is a, this is just as good of a, this is like a good feeling. Like this is a great feeling. And, um, I feel like for you, you would benefit from, honestly, bro, I feel like, I feel like, I don't know, man, who, who knows what the answers are. Maybe it is just our boredom. That's, that's fucking us up. You know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah, it is, cause... but like, but, but, but I, I, I I don't know. I mean, I mean, bro. Again, it goes. It goes back to the beginning of this podcast. I don't know anymore what's good or bad. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I could. I could. I could sit here and like try to give you advice. But now that I'm, now that I'm trying to give you advice, I'm realizing that it just doesn't make any sense because you being this way, maybe you do go get hurt because you are so invested. And then eureka moment, we come up with something. Now we have 500,000 subscribers or it works out and then you get married to this person and everything is say la vie, you know? So yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, like, yeah, I, I mean, bro, like I sit here, like I sit here and question it too of like, like what it, what is really going on, you know, with me and, um, it's, it's kind of what I told you like, like a week ago or two weeks ago where mm -hmm. it's like, Sometimes when I do dive into like the meditation, like I've had, I've had a bunch of phases with it, right? Like I've had a lot of ups and downs with mm -hmm. it. I've been like two weeks on, you know, a month and a half off and then a week on or four days on and then a fuck the meditation, bro. Maybe even just reading books, like fuck the meditation. Even that bro. Like every time, like. It's like I almost need everything. It feels good though, doesn't it? So, like the yo, monk, like you know, you were it, fired up when I, you were reading that yeah, shit. Yeah, it's like, but it's like, it's like when everything is like. I don't know, like when I do that, because it's like I want to be so focused and so locked in to doing that. Mm -hmm. I it's like I almost need everything to be perfect. Right. I told you like the funny story like the other day, like bro, I was really, yeah, I was really trying, bro. Like yeah. I really was going outside like barefoot. Yeah. I, I tried it, bro, yeah. and then it's just like I'm out there and I'm getting like. <laughs> I'm getting eaten by bugs, bro. And right. I live next to a grocery store and they're fucking, the trucks Playing are Daddy beep, Yankee. beep, beep, beep. While I'm trying to listen That's to fucking amazing. Deepak Chopra. And then, <laughs> and then the guys next door are fucking yelling, you know, mm. and, and I'm getting bit by bugs and I'm like, mm. bro, I'm trying to meditate and read. And I, I fucking, I can't, you know, and then I get frustrated. I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to the gym. You know, mm. when I was in Miami, it was nice. I just went out on the balcony. Wasn't bro. it nice? You know? The sun, no shirt, balcony, whatever. Yeah. But what I'm saying is sometimes like when I've gotten that mode and I do that, like I almost feel numb. Mm. And 
and maybe I don't like all the thoughts that go on in my mind. Maybe, yeah. maybe there is some things that, that goes on in my mind that, that, I, that I do run from, that I don't want to face, that I don't like. Mm. There, there are parts about myself that I do not like, that I am shameful of, mm. right? And, and when I do tap into that, maybe I do have to face them. And maybe that's not the first thing I want to do when I wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. But the reason I'm, I'm saying this of like why maybe I'm so invested right now or, or I feel this type of way. Cause like this is the first time in a long time that like I've felt something yeah, good or bad. It, it feels nice to feel something, mm. something outside of your conscious control where you feel an emotion, you feel something that, that, that you haven't felt in a long time. And like, that's what I feel right now. Like it's, this is really the first time in a long time that I've felt something mm -hmm. that I felt passionate about something that I, that I see, that I see some type of, of realness in. And, and I don't know if it's, if it's strictly based off of the, the authenticity and the, and the real, and, and the, like, the facts of what it is mm -hmm. or if it or if it is a me problem mm -hmm. and i and i think there is a reality where it is a me problem yeah. because you know i everyone you know like when you scroll tiktok like a bunch of our clips have have fucking all the comments say it like for you page you know like like this is really the for you page you know like this is <laughs> this is exactly how i'm feeling mm -hmm. and uh you know, the other night, of course, bro, like for you page going crazy. Mm -hmm. Like literally every single clip was exactly how I was feeling. And a lot of them were like, it felt like it, I was feeling, I, I, I felt attacked, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. it felt like, yo, like this shit is for me. Mm -hmm. Like I really needed to hear this right now. And it's mm -hmm. insane how strong the algorithm is that was, like, I had a moment with that the other night when mm -hmm. I'm just like, how? <sighs> I'm like, I didn't even talk to anyone about yeah. how I'm feeling right now. Yeah. How the fuck does my TikTok algorithm know exactly how I'm feeling? Right. It literally knows exactly how I'm feeling. And it's putting the clips on my page that like, one, I feel just like this. Or two, I needed to hear this right now. Uh -huh. It's so weird. It's crazy to yeah. me, like the, how they do that. Like, I don't know. I think they've done something like with our brains or, or something. But that like... And, and one of the clips was like, yo, like all the shit that you're feeling right now, it has nothing to do with anyone else. Mm -hmm. All that that shit has to do is because of you. Mm. It's a you problem. It's something that you need to go and look in the mirror and face it yourself. It's mm. something that you need to feel. It's something that you need to figure out before you can even try to pursue anything else in your life. Mm -hmm. Because you're not going to be able to give your all until you give it to yourself. And, and that, and that was a, a thing for me. And it's like, it's hard, you know, it is hard though. Sometimes when it's like, you do feel some type of way. Right. And then deep down, like, you know what you have to do, or, you know, it's right. Or, you know, like it's, it's probably you like, you know, like it's probably like, it's just something that like you probably shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Or something that like. Mm -hmm maybe isn't the best thing for you mm -hmm. but a lot of us lack self-control and discipline yeah well, i mean bro that's that's kind of that's kind of what i was saying before of just like um of just like the two decisions and like you know just pick one you know if you want to bro if you want to pick the the harder level if you want to pick the thing that's maybe not as good for you i mean bro like i could probably argue that that thing is better for you because there's more lessons involved in that thing than like avoiding than avoiding it um i am certainly i certainly bro with the whole last girl situation i am now like all right god no more crazy spiritual older uh, nightlife women you know what i'm saying like i see things bro i used to be the guy on hinge where if a girl had like as like one of their prompts like um don't hit me up uh they'll be like uh um uh i don't know it'll just be something stupid be like yo i'm looking for a short nerd and I'm like, oh, I'm not that. So even though this girl's smoking hot and I would love to spend a night with her, X. Like, you know, but I used to be that guy where I, I would hit her up and be like, 
yo, like, why not, like, a tall, athletic guy, you know, but I'm like, bro, she, like, literally just stated right there, black and white, she wants a short nerd, so I'm like, all right, X now, you know, like, and I see that, and, like, that's a form of growth to me, you know, I'm on Hinge, and I'm looking at all these girls, and I'm like, in the past, I, I know I would have found them attractive, but because of the last girl I was with, I'm like, all right, wait a second, red flags, red flags, uh, to save myself the mental pain, because although I told you you could turn pain into self respect and that could help you, I also don't want to feel guys, that again. I love so New let me just do I really do. You know, you know if you guys didn't know, Zach and I, we're from the city. But you know what I love more than New York City? This delicious ice cold Evermore spring water. Guys, this water, it's sourced from an artesian well that is 2,000 years old in the Himalayas of Louisiana. I don't even know if that's a thing. All, all seriousness, this water is amazing. Go to evermore.com to get you some best water I've ever had. Huge shout out to our sponsor. We love you guys, and we love you guys for watching this podcast. I'm sure it's a banger. Much love. If you guys get one of these, tag us at The Journey Podcast on Instagram. We'll send you a free case and some money. Much love. All right. We're back. Go for we it. We are back. We're back. Um, yeah. I was um, most happy dad's treating you. They're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First time I had the, those uh, motherfuckers are gonna rue the day. I'm telling you, yo, I'm down right now to commit to not signing with them. <laughs> That's what I'm down to do, bro. That's what I'm down to do. Uh, I mean, I, I want to make them rue the day a little bit. I'm gonna be I honest mean, with you. I think on paper that shit sounds nice, but they're just so massive that they don't give a fuck how big we get. They don't fucking need us. Isn't that you know? funny? It you know Isn't like that kind of funny? at the end of like you know I I can just sit here and say that you know like without no, no, any no, no, ego no, no, involved. No 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 no. I think I think, bro. I've had a I've had. Oh like hold a- on. Hello. Hey. You're on the Journey podcast. Say hello, Doctor with Doctor hey, Steve. Sam. Um, I'm driving home actually, so I was just calling to see what you were doing. Oh yeah, we're about I'm to wrap. Ready. We're about uh, to wrap up in like probably like 15, 20 minutes. All right, should I come over? Yes. All right, I'll see you. Then. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Bye. All right, drive safe. You're a cocksucker, bro. <laughs> Do you know how much I miss that? Do you know how fucking miss much <laughs> I miss getting a call from a bad female? You want me to come over tonight? <laughs> We're gonna lay up, watch a movie. We're gonna watch the fucking. I would watch the Notebook tonight. I would go home and watch, I would. I would right now go watch the fucking Titanic. Get some cookies or something. You're soft. We uh, you're we- soft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here and I, I'm asleep on this motherfucking floor is what I'm going to do with just me, myself, and I, right? I'm going to go to 7-Eleven. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to get 10 of these things. Yo. um, <laughs> That shit is hysterical. Yeah, we actually watched a notebook the other day. That was the first time I watched that. Maybe. Yeah, bro. I'm, I'm just at, a, I'm just at a place in my life, bro, where it's like, if I want to do it, like I'm going to do it. And, and I'm going to try it and yeah. I'm going to give it my all. Mm-hmm. And if I end up getting burned or if I end up failing or if it ends up fucking me over or if I end up getting hurt, I can at least say like, hey, like at that moment, that's what I wanted and I wanted to try it. Mm-hmm. And that's just where I'm at. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to hold back on certain things. And, and it could be anything. It could be relationships, females. It could be business opportunities. It could be YouTube. It could right. be this. It could be that. Like. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm done. I'm done like trying to save myself from what didn't happen yet. Yeah. That's a, that's a problem that a lot of people make where it's like they try to save themselves the hurt. They try to save themselves from putting their themselves in risky situations mm-hmm. because they're afraid of what the outcome might be. They're afraid of like, what if it doesn't go as planned? And, right. and I'm so over that. I'm so over of like, having that regret of like pursuing something and not giving it my all. I thought mm-hmm. about that shit today, even with basketball, bro. I, I was at the, L, I was at LA fitness and, and I was just, I was lifting and I was in between sets and I went over and I'm just watching the basketball court and 
ran into a buddy of mine and you know he's like well why don't you play no more i was like bro i haven't picked up a basketball in two months and he's like why why don't you come play i was like i was like bro i i i, I can't get up for it right and he goes what do you mean we come at 10 30 i said no bro not fucking waking up right like up you know like it doesn't get it doesn't do anything for me anymore mm-hmm. you know and then and then and then as i'm lifting i'm listening to fucking i don't know probably like rod wave or some shit yeah and i'm just like i'm sitting there and i was just like I never want to have this feeling of regret again in my life mm-hmm. where I truly was passionate about something and I loved it with all my heart and I didn't give it my fucking all. I love that. I half-assed it. I did the bare minimum just to get by and now I have to live with that. Now I have to look in the mirror and, and look at the guy and be like, yo, you didn't, you didn't try hard enough. You didn't fucking do it enough. Mm-hmm. And I never want to have that feeling again. Mm-hmm. So anything I do now regardless whether it fucking makes my life amazing or it fucking crushes me i'm gonna go all in and i'm gonna give it my all bro, and whatever bro, happens you happens you my bad fuck you up, no, no 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 you're good i'm saying like bro you don't half-ass things though what do you half-ass well i did i like i like bro like i half I, I didn't half-ass basketball but i could have did more could you, you know have? yeah of course i could have bro i was in juco bro i i was at a division one juco in the best conference in america and i smoked weed seven times a day mm. i wasn't in the gym right I was trying to be cool with my boys because that's what they wanted to do. And I was being lazy and I was tired. Like, yes, did we have four hour practices where my body and I couldn't fucking walk? Yeah. But could I have gone on the gun and got an extra 300 shots up a day? I could have, of course. Could instead of smoking weed at night, could I have fucking did laps around the fucking swamps in Louisiana? Probably, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. when, uh, you know, when, 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 when I, when I was out on an Island, guarding a d1 transfer from trinity valley and he scores three or four buckets on me in a row because they're calling iso because i'm the worst defender on the floor yeah could i have been stronger faster you know gave it more so i could i was more able to guard that guy in that situation yeah yeah i could go back and fucking and 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 pick apart every single thing i did wrong in my life but that's what i'm saying where it's like yo one my memory is amazing so i remember every and like i'm talking 2017 now we're talking six years ago mm-hmm. i can tell you every single game where like i did something wrong or little things like that like i can pick myself apart mm-hmm. but i'm saying where it's like basketball was my life basketball was my passion basketball was everything to me and like Yes, I, I'd put a shit ton of work in towards it, but I could have did more. Mm. I could have did more. Mm. I could have I could have played at a higher level. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like I could have reached my full potential. Mm. And maybe God, the universe, didn't instill that that extra tenacity, that extra drive into me. So I could not succeed in basketball and I can do this. Maybe. I don't fucking know. Who knows what's good or bad. Mm -hmm. But all I know is like in that chapter of my life, like that was one thing that I I could have gave more effort to. That was one thing that like I think I think I didn't reach my ceiling and I never want to feel that again. You know, I never want to feel that again because like, I'll take that with me, even though I don't show it now and I don't talk about it, bro. That shit eats me alive when like. Bro, all my buddies, all my best, all some like most of my best, bro, they're all basketball players. They're all getting paid doing this shit. And like, I was right there with them, you know, like I could have did it. I could have did it. You know that feeling, bro. Like yours was stripped obviously from injury, not from work ethic. But like, I'm sure there's a small, small piece of you that still fucking bothers you, bro. When you're watching that Colorado, Oregon game today, like, yo, like that could have been me fucking making that tackle on that quarterback, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And I love where we're at. I'm happy where we're at, you know, because that that physical labor, that 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 grueling work, bro, that that shit takes a toll on you. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, that shit does, does take a toll on you, it really but it is rewarding, you know. Oh, it is rewarding. So, the moral of the story is like, I do have regrets in my life, and and there are certain things that I know I could have been a better person at. And I know I could have put my all into something and I could have done more. And, and I, I just never want to have that feeling again because cause there is a piece of me that, that does think about that every single day. And it does bother me from time to time. But, you know, that's just why I'm like an all-in guy now where it's like, yo, like, just just do your fucking job. You know, do your job. You, you, tell, you tell people, you, t- you go on here and you talk about like what you want to do with your life. It's like, go actually do it. 
instead of just fucking like doing it for doing it for like the idea of it, you know? Bro, you, you're gonna look back on this episode, bro. And like you just you like the testimony you gave for yourself was just so beautiful, bro. Like outside looking in, like that shit was fucking that was it, you know? Like that was it, bro, you know? Like fuck fuck the clips, bro. We yeah, we, yeah. We, we you and I, bro, like we fish for clips, you know what I'm saying? Cuz we have to, but like I'm just saying, bro, like f- like that was it, you know? Like that's the fucking moment right there, you know? And uh But that's why and- I was so like that's why I'm, that's why I've, I'm so persistent about this shit. Yeah. You know, like have 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 I missed a week of no, posting? Not a day. In the last 50 weeks? No. Have I missed one week? No. Have I missed a day of clips or that? Like no, yeah. bro, like I haven't, you know? Yeah. Just because I'm just like, you know, like I missed out on that opportunity. You know, I had that opportunity and I let it slip through my fucking fingers. Mm. And now I have to live with that every single day of like, yo, I had the opportunity to make something out of my life for the one thing that I loved and I let it go. Yeah. And I'm not going to let that happen again. I'm not going to make that same mistake again. So like, that's why I'm so passionate about this. And like, that's why I take it so serious. And that's why I'm so like, you know me, like you're more like easygoing and kind of like go with the flow and stuff like that. When I'm like, no, like bro, send me the shot. Like I need right. to edit at 5 AM. Like I need to make these clips. By this time, I need right. to get the post. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like a perf- I'm a perfectionist now because yeah. like I really did think about that because like this is my new basketball. Yeah. I can't physically do it anymore. The basketball thing, you know. So like this is my new this is my new sport, mm-hmm. and like I I don't want to make that same mistake again because like I don't even think I've ever brought that up to you. I've probably never even said that ever. But like, bro, when I go like to those summer games and shit like that, and I watch these people, and bro, like when I'm on my phone, bro, it's all bass, bro. Like that shit crushes me. That shit does hurt, bro. Like, it really does hurt, bro. Because I, I loved that shit. Mm-hmm. And it took me so much fucking time and work and effort and blood, sweat, and tears to get to where I got. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even fucking make it that far. I was like, yo, it took me all this work just to get here. Mm-hmm. And that's where it ends? That's where it ends? So, I'm not gonna make that fucking same mistake again. And and this is my this is my new this is my new shit, you know, this is my new sport. So Yeah, well bro, I mean that's kinda what I was getting at, bro. Like like when, you know, you were saying like, Oh Nelk, they're not gonna you know, the thing that I feel like separates us, truthfully, is like, bro, your work ethic is insane, bro. You have the craziest work ethic in the world. Yeah. But the one thing where I feel like you lack is vision. And that's where I come in. You know what I'm saying? Because like, bro, with the Nelk, like, bro, like I'm telling you, like I think we can be bigger than Nelk, bro, in a whole different fucking lane. Because, bro, like, does the world, is the world really, bro, over the next 10 years, well, depression and suicide and all this shit goes up, are they really going to value drugs, sex, alcohol, stupid content? Like, is, I think that that intersection, I think that's going to happen, bro. Like all the all the bullshit. I'm not saying all they post is bullshit. They're entertaining. They're super entertaining yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying like, bro. But what we do, the need for that, bro. It's the, bro. I've been trying to figure out why the fuck people fuck with us, you know. And bro, like where I'm at now is like, I'm very. I was scared. I was scared for a little bit. And you know, a part of me is still afraid, because I really want to make it, bro. And I want to stop sleeping on the fucking floor. You know, I really want to make it, but you know, bro, I'm a pretty smart fucking guy. I wasn't school smart, you know, I was not the smartest guy, but I, I was able to do certain things in my life that were impressive. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to name them, but I was able to do things that like, you know, how many times I've heard from someone, yo, Jake, I see you're killing it. You know, like I, mean, I was able to work my way around these things and like, um, One thing that I've 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 pretty much uh, I've bro I've identified is like bro like this self help shit, um, or like bro like yo the, I mean bro there's a million, there's a million stances I can take on it but like bro the reason why we're doing so well is because bro we are those guys, 
Like, we really are those guys. Like, bro, I get scared. I'm like, yo, what if this shit stops working? It's not going to stop working, bro. Because, like, bro, we are those fucking guys. Like, um. Yeah, bro, that, that was our, like, that was the most, like, my most viewed clip ever. Yeah. But that's literally how I feel. Like, mm-hmm. and, like, and, 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 and I, I agree to that. Where it's, like, sometimes I don't see the vision and, 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 and you are the vision. And that's where you come in. And where yeah. it's, like, there is a strong part of me that, you know. I do think this thing is going to be massive and I yeah. think like we're going to be some of the biggest in the game. And then, mm. and then bro, there, there is another, the, you know, that, that voice in the back of my head where like, I'm like, yo, like what if? Well, I think, I think, I think what helped me bro truthfully was like, bro, seeing that division one shit. Cause like, bro, I was way worse at football in high school than you were in basketball. Yeah. Bro. I couldn't touch the fucking, you know how much I wanted to play in the fucking, the all-star game on long island i forget it was like it was like new york versus long island mm-hmm. it was at hofstra you know how cool that was see my best friend femi play in that yeah, shit yeah, bro yeah. like that but they had the unis bro and everyone was there and shit bro. i wasn't even a thought there was no trial there was nothing you know what i'm yeah. saying like bro like and and that's why even when i got to even when i got to nassau you know like bro, i wasn't really even that good you know but like what like what what really helped me was one, I mean, bro, when I was 14, I mean, bro, like, even when I was 13, like, bro, I wasn't like, I wasn't really getting that much girls, you know, bro, I, I, I've just had this thing in my life, bro, bro, I've been, I've been very blessed, like, I don't know, I don't, you know, maybe destiny doesn't exist, bro, but like, I just saw at a young age, like, when I was 13, bro, when I was 14, I, I got thrown into, like, being the man, you know, and like, that kind of, like, opened up my eyes to, like, like, the vision, you know, it's just like, it was like, whoa, like, I can, in, in this year, I could be like a normal kid, and then this next year, I could get any girl I want. I could be the talk of. I could just be the most popular thing in the world. I could have the most confidence ever. Like <laughs> the same thing happened with football. You know, I was like, bro, I was a fucking horrible football player. And then, bro, I saw. I I, I somehow got a fucking Division One full ride. You know, like that shit was crazy. You know, and I and I think I I think. I think right there, like it just it, it made uh it made the vision on me easy. But now, bro, I'm able to look at the evidence, bro, and like I haven't thought. You know what's funny, bro? When we first had our first journey podcast episode, I went back and I listened to it, bro. I haven't had the opportunity to be on much podcast, so like I haven't talked about like when anxiety was like a real thing for me because I haven't had a panic attack, bro. Truthfully, in like four years, but when I had them. It was hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was hell. And and the last girl I was with, you know, she told me one of her reasons for breaking up with me was cuz she was darkness and I was light. You know, she was like you haven't been through as much as I've been through. And I went back to think on my anxiety and I was like, "Yo, again, like you have no fucking idea what I've been through. You don't even know cuz we weren't even really that cool yeah, at the at time, all. you yeah, know?" Yeah, at all. And, and but like and that's what gets me sad about my boy Q cuz like my boy Q was there for the whole show. my first panic attack. I was on the phone with him. I got to call him tonight. But um but yeah, bro, like it was, uh, it was, and, 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 and that's where I'm kind of saying like, bro, I, what I was fearful. Cause I'm like, bro, the accounts are blowing up. What if they stop? And I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, bro, we are those guys. Like, bro, we really are like, yo, for, for, for any, like, I, 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 I'm, I, I can't, I can't not be confident about what we're doing. And I have to be over the top confident about what we're doing because, also, like, bro, I can see quality. You know, my favorite book, bro, is the Zen, of, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And it says the whole point of this fucking book, which is one of the greatest philosophy books of all time, is like, what is quality? And it says in the book, quality is just caring about something. And I care so deeply, bro. I care so deeply. So although... I've had thoughts of being afraid of not making it in my life. I'm a, now I'm kind of like, how could I not make it? Like nobody cares more about me and my path and my purpose and helping others than me. So I'm just saying, like for us, like bro, and and right now, I mean, hey, I mean. Clip it up, bro, in, in the next four years. I don't think it's a mistake that we did 100 million views. 
And I don't think it's a mistake, bro, that the fucking Instagram is blowing up. And I don't think it's a mistake that companies are starting to reach out. And I don't think it's a mistake that so many people have listened to us. And this is the most important thing. And have said that we have walked them off the fucking edge of suicide. We've received at this point at least hundreds of messages of just that, you know? And bro, like I've literally, bro, like literally just now, right, right before this podcast, um, when... Like, bro, this is an email from a from a fan, you know, asking for advice. Bro, I don't think this is a mistake, you know? And now I'm at the point of, like, I used to feel like, oh, like, I, may, I can't help this person. Of course I can help this person. I don't need a degree, and I don't need uh, 60 years of life, and I don't need to go to Japan to study Buddhism to, to help someone because, bro, they're, they're in our position, and that's why what we do is so great is because, bro, like we're like we're, we're the everyday guys. And I think that's the point of this podcast. Like, bro, who know who knows what's good or bad? But like, at least we try. Like, we're just the type of guys where no matter what, we're just trying to go. We're just trying to live the best life that, that, that we can think of. Yeah. Yeah, no, bro. It's a. Uh, yeah, it's easy for me when uh, when I try when when I explain to other people or, or people do give flowers of, of, of what I'm doing. Uh, I get into almost a flow state of like everything. Right. Mm-hmm. But you know, like, like, like that clip, you know, when, when, when I'm by myself, I do, I do, you know, question myself a lot or mm-hmm. I do, I do lack, I guess, vision or, or I lack, you know, I've just made a lot of promises and I've made a lot of, I've made a lot of, yeah, that that's really what it is. Like I've made a lot of promises to people and all I want to do is just live up to them. Mm-hmm. And there is a fear that it's like, if I don't live up to them, what am I going to do? Mm. You know, what if I don't make it? What if I don't do the things that I said I was going to do? And maybe that's not the right mentality to have, but that's just that voice in my head that I've always had mm-hmm. where it's like the angel and the devil on both of your shoulders. And like one's telling you like, you're going to be the best you're going to make it. And then the other one's telling you like, yo, there is a world where this shit doesn't pan out how you thought it was. You know, there is a world where you might have to go get a regular job. There is a world where, you know, you could fail. Yeah. And that voice is, is always prevalent. That voice is always there. And it's maybe not as loud as the other voice, but Mm -hmm. you know, like that, that, that thought is always there and then something good happens, right. Or, or I get a boost of confidence and then I snap out of it. Right. And I start to feel it, but it's easy. That voice gets a little louder, right? Like that negative voice in your head gets a little louder when times are rough, Mm -hmm. when things aren't going always as planned. Mm -hmm. It's easy to like, look, look in the mirror and be like, I'm not shit. Mm -hmm. You know, what have I done? I'm not doing anything with my life. There is a world where this reality doesn't work out how I planned. Mm -hmm. And you can almost get, you can get blinded by that voice, right? Like you can get, you can get really confused by that voice. And, uh, that's where I'm at sometimes just because like, I'm such a realist, right? Like there, there's, I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist Mm -hmm. where I'm very, optimistic about everything I have going on. And I am confident because of the work that I've put in Mm -hmm. with everything I've done in my life. But there is that other voice that comes in, right? Like there is that other part of me that is like, yo, like sometimes like sometimes bad things happen to good people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like the people that are loving, caring, passionate, driven, tremendous work ethic, the worst possible things, the sickest shit that you could think of happens to them. And it's like, what did that person do to deserve that? Yeah. And like, even to go back to the beginning of the pod, like that was instilled in me at 12 years old. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I can't escape that reality. I, what did I do what, from, from years one to 12? What did I do in my life for my mom to die? Did I do anything to deserve the death of my mother 
So that carries with me for the rest of my life where it's like no matter how good you are or the good you put out into this world and the love you give, bad shit is going to happen to you. Shit isn't going to happen the way that you have it planned. It doesn't fucking matter what you put out. You can't, 99% of the shit we do in this life, you it's, it's completely out of your control. And more often than not, you don't deserve what you get. My camera died, so bring it home. Love you, bro. Love you too, bro. Good shit. Good shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I swear to God, bro. We're going to be toasting in Mykonos. I swear to God, bro. I was watching Pretty Woman last night. And uh, if you don't know what Pretty Woman is, it's a movie about a very, very, very rich, successful entrepreneur, Richard Gere, that falls in love with Julia Roberts, who's a prostitute picks her up off the street and it made me kind of think about the last girl that I was with right so I sat on the ground last night crying I was literally bro thinking I was sitting here bro on that floor last night crying because bro like I felt like the movie was about me you know I felt last like, night yeah bro I felt like it was about the last girl that I was with in nightlife I'm not gonna get into the details but she wasn't a prostitute but I'm just saying like he was able to the reason I couldn't even do nice things for this fucking girl you know I couldn't put her in a penthouse you know I couldn't get her the dresses that she wanted you know it's all things that Richard Gere wanted to do and it made her fall in love with him. And it made me think about my relationship with her. And it was like, what if I, I did have money? What if I was that guy, you know, and I could, and I could give this girl the world. Would she still have, would she still have left me? I don't know. But I was crying on that floor last night because I'm ready to be that fucking guy. So I'll bring it home on that. Just, you know, for us is like, bro, like I'm telling you, I, I, I wasn't saying to you, like you lack vision to come at you. I was just saying like, bro, I'm just trying to be like objective, like between the two of us. Like, I'm not saying that I'm some fucking vi actually. Yeah. I mean, in some ways I do feel that way. Cause like, bro, like I'm just super optimistic. How many times have I told you something that didn't pan out? You know, it just, all oh, I know how to live my life, but, um, but we're going to be good and you guys are going to be good because we're going to outgrow the best fucking community of all time and uh we've been getting more views on these solo episodes hopefully this this episode right now gets over a thousand views uh we appreciate every single one of you and we hope you guys get something from these conversations but uh we look forward to meeting you guys in person and uh evermore they were the first fucking sponsor and people to believe in us and uh one day that sponsorship is going to cost a lot of fucking money um, and Evermore is, we're always going to rock with Evermore because they were there from the beginning. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys. And uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, please. It helps us. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.